and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Business of Property. I am your host, Cheryl Leong, from Property Development Australia. At the Business of Property, we interview superstar guests in the property development space that share their expertise, their deals, and their stories to help empower, build, and grow our community of property developers and investors. So hello to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube land. We're going live. Please give me a shout out if you're here with us today in the comments section below or on the right or wherever it is on your screen. Our guest tonight is no stranger to the business of property. In fact, our guest is very, very special because he joined us for the initial business of property and he was the reason why the business of property actually exists. Um, some of you already know this dear friend, mentor, coach of mine, Mr. Tony Meredith, who has over 25 years experience working with some of the largest corporations in a variety of senior sales, commercial and leadership roles. Tony is also known in the property community as the property coach, um, although he also coaches businesses to grow. And we thought, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about development, we talk about how development happens, and I thought it was a good time for us to sort of step back and go, all right, what are the soft skills? What are the, what are the soft skills and really essential skills that we need in property to be able to grow as developers and in our property journey? And Tony and I said, hey, why don't we talk about leadership? Because really at the end of the day, leadership is not about only self-leadership, is leading teams. And we're talking in development, your leading team. So Without further ado, I would love to invite Mr. Tony Meredith to the Business of Property Dance Floor. Cheryl, hello. Hello, Tony. Fantastic how are you? To have you? Very, very well, thank you. And how are you doing? I'm doing great. Listen, I was just reminiscing backstage when you're talking about where it all began all those many, many years ago. And I don't recall when we started an introduction back then like it is today. Gosh, you've, you've grown. Gosh, this program's grown. Cheryl, congratulations to you. What a thank professional you. intro. And, and thank you. I've also grown sideways, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but it has. The business of property has been an incredible mm. journey. And, mm. and I have to say a huge thank you to you for encouraging it i remember i remember a sort of brainstorming some ideas around yep. the the title and um and you know it was just around hey just get out there get out mm. there and, and and share an interview um and it's i reckon it's almost four years Four years. Uh, it is. It also was four years. And you're right, Chair. A lot of people really struggle with social media. I know this is not about social media, but they really struggle with social media. They struggle to get out there and share. And, and the problem is that they're thinking too much about themselves as opposed to the value that they can yeah. give people. And so that's what you and I talked about all those years ago. It's like just share value. You know, you've got some amazing guests uh, who come on here. I watch uh, you guys from a distance. And uh, I just think it's wonderful. So again, uh, congratulations to you. Congratulations to your community. Um, you know, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tony. Well, today is around, I mean, I mentioned very briefly around not only I mean leadership, right? But we're not only talking about self-leadership, it's leadership in the sense of like we do need to step up in, in, in terms of developers and we may not necessarily think, what do you mean a leader? You know, I'm a, I'm a developer. I'm not leading a team. Mm. But in fact, we actually are. We're leading people to our vision. So there's so so many opportunities for leadership, right? So you touched on self-leadership, but then also you've got leadership of consultants, leadership of contractors, leadership of builders, leadership of your joint venture partnership. <clears throat> you know, so we've got, we're in, you know, we're in business together with other people. There's leadership that needs to go uh, on in that regard as well. So leadership is happening in every single facet of property development. I'm sure, like you said, not many people think of it in that way. But it's a massive opportunity for all of us. And so thank you for inviting me to come on here and have a chat, chat about, you know, what is an incredibly important topic, particularly when you think about that time is money in development, right? And so if we can expedite our project, if we can have that project go a lot more effectively and efficiently, we can compress timeframes, which means that we can save on those interest costs, sell our projects faster, move on to the next one. Absolutely. All right. Well, I know that you've put a few little slides together because 
you know, when we, we want to be able to see, I mean, that we can talk about leadership or, or as you know, till the cows come home. But I know that there is a certain art and and some level of structure and theory behind it as well. So dive into it. There is, yeah, there is. So so go for it. Share away. Excellent, excellent. All right. And if anyone has any particular comments, question, as always, put them in the comment section below. And as as we talk and through the presentation, we'll also read those out. So here we go. Rightio. So you're you're the driver, so you can uh, flick it on through. But how leadership skills can enhance your property journey, and they absolutely can. So who am I? In case you're wondering, uh, who am I? Uh, so I'm a property coach. I help people create property businesses. I help them take mind, you know, you know build a growth mindset. Take enormous amounts of action. Uh, I know Cheryl, you have a, a particular nickname for me, but it's all about action. Uh, you know, we do systems, processes, deal final, everything that we do in property is a business and when you treat it like a business you're going to get business-like results and so that's one of the big things that i do so others will teach you how to go and subdivide or how to go and renovate but this is all about a business <coughs> and when it comes and sorry too because i'm just at the back end of a cold uh when it comes to leadership so there's two key things i thought i'd share with everybody tonight so the first is that leadership is the ability to influence or guide others and so when when you think about your projects your consultants, um, your builders, uh, your contractors, uh, whether you think about your joint venture team, uh, your money partner team, whoever, it's about the ability to influence and guide other people. And it's also important to recognise that leadership is a behaviour, not a job title. And I do a lot of work with big businesses right across the country, and there's a lot of people who are not leaders in the organisation, but they demonstrate leadership skills, and there are people who do have the job title of manager or leader, and they are dreadful leaders, right? And so just because of your job title doesn't then determine your ability to be a leader or not. We can all demonstrate leadership regardless of what our role is in an organisation or what our role is within the property journey. And I, I'd just like to add to that as well. And, and leadership, what I remember having a conversation with someone who was talking about negotiating with vendors. And and he asked sort of my experience in terms of negotiating with, with lots of vendors at, at one time. And I said that the number one thing was, like you mentioned, being able, if, if someone felt that confidence that you were guiding them mm. or that you were taking responsibility of the process, mm. they were more likely to come on board with you. Mm. And that's a sense of leadership. You might not even, you know, you might be doing that and you haven't really coined it as leadership, but that really is because if for someone to be able to sign up with you into something, whether it's a contract, whether it's a joint venture partnership, there's a level of trust and, 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 and um, you know, that trust and influence that you have to be able to say, yeah, this person I feel is going to be the right person that can yeah, lead this totally. Well, look, look, at the, look at the top line there, influence or guide uh, other people. You're ex exactly right, Cheryl, and that, that's the key thing. And, and as I said, it's also about self-leadership. And so don't just think of this in the terms of leading other people, whilst, yes, we're going to touch on that, but it's also self-leadership. So what does self-leadership mean? It means raise your standards. It means if you want a different outcome, you have to do different things. You have to raise your standards. And so it's all about self-leadership. So I know a lot of people who are watching Maybe they want to have different outcomes in their property journey, greater success for themselves. Maybe they want to find that next deal, whatever it is, you need to adopt leadership. You need to adopt leadership, raise your standards and do the right things to ensure that you get the outcome that you're looking for. Absolutely. Right. So if you remember nothing else, if you remember nothing else from this uh, next uh, 30 minutes, remember these three things, clarity, proficiency and environment. So when it comes to leadership, it's important that we have clarity over the communication. <clears throat> so quite often I see a lot of leaders, and again, this will apply in business as it does in property. <coughs> they will say, uh, so for example, I've got a, a client who's uh, in construction. Hey, I want, go to the job site. Hey, I want that thing done. And then what will happen is the way in which you've intended something is not necessarily received the same. So just because you said something, you could then go and do something else and come back and say, hang on a second, I asked you to do such and such, but you didn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so then, then the issue will be, but Tony, I told them I wanted it done. And I'll say, uh-huh, 
but did they understand what you wanted them to do? Did they have clarity on what it is that you wanted to do? And so it comes down to communication. So whenever there is an issue in any partnership, team, etc., I can assure you that communication or lack thereof is the reason for it. There is not enough clarity. Maybe you haven't spoken your mind. Maybe you've thought something, but you haven't articulated it, right? Or maybe you've assumed something and haven't asked questions. Either way, you haven't got clarity, right? And that's then causing you to make a particular judgment or a particular decision. You need to seek clarity. So that is the absolute number one thing in all of this. And not just clarity from you, but has the message been received the way that I intended it? And so how do you ensure that it's the message is clear? Because someone might, you know, and it's different perspectives as well, right? Someone might say, I've told this person this is the way to do it. Um, whereas the other person's gone, yeah, that's what he said. But then, you know, there's a misalignment in that that expectation of what's done. This is this looks done to me and this does you know, this looks done to me. So then then sure. there's a different outcome, you know, that, that sure. perception. How do you ensure well, it's clear? Well, you, you firstly, you ask people, right? So do you understand what I've just said? Could you paraphrase back to me what it is that I just said, right? Yeah. So you actually go and ask them, say, hey, I've gone and delivered this big, long, uh, winded message to you. Could you just, just before I move on, or just before I let you go and do that task, can you just paraphrase back to me what it is that I want you to do? Well, I want you to do this, 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 and this. Great. So those first two, yes. Listen, that third one, not quite. Uh, what I was actually intending was blah, blah, blah. Right, so you get them to come back uh, to you. You make sure there's alignment up front. So when you talk about partnerships, I can assure you that every single partnership in the whole wide world, doesn't matter if it's in property, business or in life, always starts off swimmingly, but not every partnership ends the same way it starts. And as I said, it's because there's a distinct lack of clarity. It might be clarity around who's doing what role. So it's not just in communication. It's like, well, these are your roles. These are my roles. I'm responsible for this. You're responsible for this, right? Who is the person I need to speak to? If something doesn't quite go wrong, who do I need to speak to? Do I have clarity as to that person is, <coughs> right? Um, the other thing is, um, you know, with the clarity bit is the responsibility of, even though we go and hire consultants, et cetera, who are professionals, don't ever assume that they will care about your project as much as you will. Mm -hmm. And I have learned this the hard way over many, many years doing plenty of stuff in property is that the consultants are not going to treat your project the same way you do. And so if you want to follow up, you need, if you want something done, you've got to follow up on it. Don't just expect that it's just going to, it's going to happen. So many times I'll, I'll speak to someone uh, who's, who's running a project. Oh, where is that at? Well, I left it with the consultant two weeks ago. I haven't had an update. Oh my gosh. Right, so you've got to stay on top of these and, again, get clarity around what's going on, when are you going to finalise it, what else needs to be completed, who's going to complete that, so on and so forth. <coughs> yeah, I think that part about responsibility is, is, is also a good reminder. Well, it's our name above the door, right? Whatever your business is called, uh, it doesn't really matter, but it's you're ultimately responsible for the outcomes within that project. And so mm -hmm. don't just sit back and expect things just to go along swimmingly because, again, through my own experience, I can tell you that it doesn't. And so you've got to take responsibility and you've got to get things moving and go back to what we talked about a moment ago with leadership. It's about the ability to influence. It's about the ability to get things done. It's about the ability to move things along. You might come across uh, a couple of challenges within your project. right? Oh, what have we got to keep doing to get this thing moving uh, in a forward direction? Yeah. Yeah. And what's proficiency mean? Proficiency is competence. So do you have the skills to do the job? Does the person have the skills to do the job? So, hey, Cheryl, you and I are in a team together and I'm going to get you to do the task of deal finding. But you've never deal found before. Now, I know you have, but just go along with me. You've never deal found before. So you might have absolute clarity in what it is that I want you to do, but you might be sitting there going, well, God, golly, I know what he wants the end result to be, but I've got no clue where to start, right? So proficiency is competency or a fancy word for training, right? So we've got to make sure that we're providing the appropriate level of training. And it doesn't have to be you delivering the training, but if there is a, a, a gap in training, then who's going to plug that gap? If we need a particular skill set, who's going to plug that particular gap? So proficiency is all around training and competence. Yeah. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a, a situation that if you're, if it's, say, for example, a consultant or or even your builder, so I'm going to throw, throw, you, throw you a curly one. That's if okay. You've got, if you've got a consultant or a builder that, that you either identify as not being proficient, mm-hmm. how do you go about addressing that? So, so what happens if you go to a doctor and you get a health check and you're not happy with it? Right? What do they say? Go. <coughs> Excuse me. They say go and get a second opinion. I'm not suggesting for one moment that as a developer you are an expert in you know civil engineering. Um, you know, um, you know n- noise, uh, uh, you know, audio engineering, whatever it might be, uh, town planning, you don't have to be the expert in all this stuff, right? But you need to be able to have enough knowledge to, to understand what's going on, but then also have a team around you to support you. Richard Branson uh, famously talks about that if he is the smartest person in a room, then he's yeah. in the wrong room. Right. So this is not about being the expert. Right. Don't misinterpret this. You you want to be the expert uh, in your respective role. So if you're project managing, if you're deal finding, if you're doing feasibilities, research, whatever, be the expert in the thing that's been ass- assigned to you. But you don't want to be the expert in um, like civil engineering degree, I think, it's like four or five years. Right. Um, you, you can't possibly be an expert in being a builder. Right, but then it's about well, where do I go if I feel something's not right? And it's about seeking that second opinion, um, maybe from a building point of view, getting uh, getting quantity surveyors in, or getting uh, uh, inspectors in, or whatever it might be. Again, use experts to help you in the process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what's environment mean? Culture. The framework, the culture, the feeling, the, you know, you talked about the soft skills at the start of the uh, the introduction, but it's all around creating a framework for success. Are we lifting each other up? Is a rising tide lifting all boats? Or are we yeah. holding each other back and causing conflict and not allowing things to move forward? Mm-hmm. That's a really big part, particularly when you're talking about partnerships and, and um, yeah, you know, Cameron's talking about different people process info in different ways. And as a, as a leader, and this is an interesting point as well, um, you know, someone mentioned the other day how football teams and you've got coaches who may be quite aggressive in how they coach. Mm. Um, you know, is that is that optimal leadership? Or is that how you know in different industries? Are there is it is there an expectation of different types of leadership where one's probably a little bit tougher than the other? You know, a bit of tough yeah. love in, in sure. one area, and that's maybe a little bit less of the tough love. So, is there a is there a more optimal leadership style depending on uh, the type of industry? So, so. Footy, it's accepted that the coach will will give give you a spray, right? It's accepted. It's been there forever. Now, does that work? No, I would argue in a lot of cases it doesn't. And, in fact, I would argue that a lot of coach, coaches overuse giving a spray and they use it at the inappropriate times and hence they don't get the result that they want. Whereas I believe that effective coaches will use the spray at an appropriate time. So it won't be a spray all the time because if you spray all the time, then it becomes white noise, right? And you just tune out to it. Whereas if you use it very effectively, then you can get the desired result. But that doesn't mean that you're you've got a team of depends what sport you follow. But there might be you know thirteen uh, men in, in rugby league or eighteen men in uh, Aussie rules, or not just men now, it's women of course. <coughs> but but that doesn't mean that having a spray is going to fire up all thirteen or eighteen yeah. of your players, yeah. right? And so you know the comment you said earlier about people process things differently, hundred percent, a hundred percent they do. Right, that's the beautiful thing. Now, is giving a spray acceptable in an office environment? Certainly not as not much in 2022. Uh, perhaps it was a little bit more accepted maybe 30, 40 years ago. But again, uh, I'd like to think that we've come a long way. I'm not saying everywhere, but we've come a long way uh, with our understanding of how to get the best out of people. Because that's the key thing, right, to recognise that because everyone processes things differently, then rather than having this blanket approach, because we're all different 
different personalities, uh, we have different interests, different values, etc. Ideal coaching is how do I then come up with something for those individuals? So I might be more direct with someone, but I might be more, uh, you know, more empathetic uh, with someone else. Yes, and it's recognizing. I mean, the point that Cameron Cameron makes as well, like understanding the disc profiles or Myers Briggs can be very useful in how different right. personalities will will absorb information and, and take on feedback as well. Well, one of the things I suggest to my clients is that when you go into a, into a partnership is to do that, is to do a, a disc profile of each other. So at least you understand from the outset, before you sign on a joint venture agreement, at least you understand the types of personality that you're working with. Because the reality is that maybe I've seen this person a couple of times at a, at a meetup or maybe I've had a beer with them or maybe I've had a coffee with them. Next minute, we're going into a multi-million dollar business together. Oh, my gosh. Right? And so you want to make sure that you're going through the appropriate, you know, courting process to make sure that we're a good fit for each other. You don't want scarcity kick it, to kick in. So scarcity is, oh, my gosh, I need that person because I haven't got enough money and they'll do. That's yes. crazy stuff, right? Because what happens is that might solve your problem immediately, but now you're in bed with someone who you are not aligned to and you're in bed for maybe the next 24 months. That's going to be a really long 24 months, I can assure you. Right, and maybe because it's going to be a long twenty-four months, perhaps the project's going to go even longer again because you're just going to lose interest and feel yeah. incredibly frustrated with the process. So really, spend time up front making sure that there's some compatibility in in working together, uh, and that we're a good fit. It's like the um, my idea is like it's like the yin and the yang, right? So you want to make sure that if you have certain skills, then I want to work with someone who has complementary skills but not the same skills, mm -hmm. that we can work together as opposed to we've both got this type of skill, this personality, so if we're drivers, we're all going flat out but we're leaving a wake of destruction behind us or if we're steady and compliant or we're sitting there making sure everything's lined up, all of our ducks are lined up in a row, we're not actually moving forward. Right, so you want to make sure that you've got the best of both worlds, so the yin and the yang, and that way then we can have a well-rounded business partnership. Yeah, absolutely. Cameron's made another another comment here. I've had a business coach that said it's quite common to find a business that isn't running as well as it could, and simply reassigning an introverted BDM into admin management and a bouncy, outgoing person in the back office gets a shot at BDM work. And all of a sudden, the business starts to to fire up. So yeah, I mean, like matching the matching the right personalities to the roles, right? It's it's always around finding the right people for the right role. Um, and skills can be. Oh, you're muted, Kearney. It's it's awareness, right? So it's awareness around round pegs and round holes. And so, have we got the right people in the right spot? to make sure that our business moves forward. And you see this a lot in sport as well. You know, people are changing positions in sport because we thought they would be a great forward or a second row or whatever, but actually they're better off um, in the centres or whatever because of the, the, the certain strengths that they're demonstrating. So it's no different in business. You know, it's about recognising where is that person best served. They might want to be doing something else, but perhaps there's low self-awareness on their behalf because actually... Their strength is over here doing blah, blah, blah. So they might, let's make something up. So they might want to go and do um, the the analysis, but their mm. strength, their bubbly, uh, you know, extroverted uh, drivers, their strength is actually in dealing with the real estate agent or conversing with uh, direct vendors. Yes. Right? So it's about recognising where is someone's strength. Again, go back to this is part of the courting process to recognise who's going to be the best person in which position to to move the project forward. Not everyone can drive the car, but everyone can play a role to make sure that the car drives forward effectively and efficiently. Yeah, and one of my, you know, favourite sort of partnerships, and we had had them on, on the business of property a while ago, was Vanessa and Scott. So you're... You're, you know Vanessa and Scott quite well, and, and they're, a, they're a great partnership in terms of those complementary skill sets and complementary personalities as well. 
and they're mm. absolutely killing it in terms of the projects that they're working on um, and just the dynamics that they have together. So Vanessa and Scott, you're, you're listening in on this. Well done. Um, and it's a fine example of just being very, you know, working out from the very beginning who's responsible for it. what the, What are the roles and responsibilities? Mm, yeah, ab absolutely. It's a, it's a great uh, partnership, and I know them both incredibly well. And yes, they're, they're doing uh, wonderful things. Uh, but again, it takes work also on both behalf. So yes, they've got complementary skills, but they work incredibly hard on how do they make sure that they're a strong, you know, mm -hmm. united team um, all the time. That just doesn't happen by accident. Like there, there's an effort that goes it goes into that. You know, so yes, it's a partnership and they continue to do great deals together, but they're also working very hard on, on their own partnership. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. So one of the elements of leadership that we talked about self-leadership, what is that? What does that really mean? You muted, Tony. Le leadership is about, you'd swear this is my first live video, honestly. Um, leadership is about um, self-leadership. It's about yourself. It's about raising your standards. It's about following through on the things that you commit to doing. It's about if you say to yourself that from 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. you're going to do research or from 3 p.m. till 4 p.m. you're going to call 10 agents, do that thing. That's self-leadership. That's about pushing through when you'd rather be 101 other places, when your family's doing wonderful things and fun things and you just want to plonk yourself in front of the telly uh, and relax. Um, self-leadership is I've got to get going because this goal that I've got for myself is way too big, way too important, uh, and I will have plenty of time down the track to do those fun things. And that's, you know, the word that comes up is also that discipline, that self-discipline to stick to the routines and, like you said, those tasks that you said you're going to do. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's and it's about then you also self leadership is you leading from the front uh, when you're in a, a public circumstance when you're at a meet up uh, demonstrate leadership demonstrate you're prepared to help other people uh, give into the community uh, these are all things that you can do from a leadership point of view we're talking offline about the networking that we do right it's about giving into the community and and being a leader even if you're not officially have the title of leader. Uh, it's about making sure that you're contributing to the betterment of that community. Yeah, absolutely. There are quite a few parts of this, and I really, really like them. It's, it's a good reminder, goal achievement. Well, you've got to be aligned, right? So if you want to come together as a team, then you've got to have a goal. You've got to have something in front of you that you're striving towards, something you're going to bound out of bed for. And if you want different things, then it ain't going to work, right? You're going to pull yourself in different directions. And so it's about making sure that what is our goal as a team? What are the objectives that we have for ourselves? What's our plans to get there, right? But we need to be aligned on what we're going for. And you also need to think about your own personal goals. and Where does that fit into it? So from an organisational point of view, obviously the organisational goals are, are, you know, are paramount, but then part of that is, well, how do my own personal goals align to the organisational goals? And it's no different here in this uh, in this environment, in a property environment. It's making sure that you've got a goal that's in front of you, you're aligned on what that goal is, you're clear on what that goal is, and we talk about um, you know monitoring and managing performance a little bit later on, but you've got to have something that you're both aligned and you're aiming towards down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Communication, we touched on this briefly. Talk, talk about it, Ed, talked about it um, a, a lot, right? And so it's about the clarity of communication, the openness of communication. You know, one of the things I was having a conversation with um, my barber this afternoon, actually. So uh, I, I got a haircut uh, just, just for tonight. Just for, this. <laughs> just, just for tonight. And I was having a chat about uh, his business. I always love to chat about business. And he was telling me that he's having a few challenges with his, uh, with his partner. Uh, and I said, you've got to lean into that conversation. And uh, he said, oh, but I don't, I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Well, you've got to lean into the conversation. The number of people who say, oh, I don't really want to rock the boat. I don't really want to have that conversation. I don't really want to say that thing. You've got to have the conversation. Now, how you say it is, is vitally important. Mm. But if you sit there and you say, no, well, I don't want to have that conversation or communicate because I'm worried about rocking the boat, but I'm going to feel bad, but I'm going to have this gnawing feeling, well, that just makes zero sense to me. 
right? Because it means that you're, you're putting yourself last. So we touched on clarity before, but if you're not feeling a particular way, if you're not happy with a particular thing within the project, stick your hand up. Talk about it. Put some structure in place around how often you meet. Uh, what's your rhythm? Uh, are you going to meet on a weekly basis, on a fortnightly basis? What are the things we're going to talk about when we come together as a team? There's these three or four items that are the regular items, and they might have an, an AOB and any other business uh, section, right? But what does that communication look like? What's the informal communication going to look like? Right, so you start to think about the methods in which we're going to communicate. Uh, if we uh, if we need to make a decision on something, uh, and we've got uh, who's who's got the the casting vote, right? All these types of things we need to be clear on all that. Allocation of resources. Well, there's so many things to do in a project. So many things, right? When you break down all of the tasks, and so who is going to do what, or who is responsible for what? So the yeah. person responsible doesn't have to be the person who's doing it, but but who is going to do what or who and or who is responsible for um, uh, for what? So that if there's a an issue in a certain area, who's responsible for for doing that thing? Who's responsible for following up on the architect? Who's responsible for you know calling the agents? So it's about the allocation of resources. And go back to the comment that was made earlier by Cameron, it's about the right allocation of resources. So making sure that people are sitting in the right seats on the bus. And that ensures as well that not, there's not one person that's taking on a load. No, exactly, right? And so that's, that's part of being in a partnership, right? That doesn't feel that fair to me if you're in a partnership and someone picks up all the load. And also what tends to happen, go back to the piece around communication, people will say uh, so-and-so needs to do a particular task and then it'll be, oh, well, they're not doing the task. You know what? I'll just do it for them. Mm -hmm. No. No, not at, not at all, right? So, it, so there's another... Um, as many sayings as you know, Cheryl, but one of them is the standard you walk past is the standard you set. If you allow something to happen, if you don't say something about something, then by that omission of you not doing something or saying something, you are effectively saying it's okay. It might be okay, but the standard you walk past is the standard you set. So you have to, you have to lean in to some of those challenging conversations sometimes. Mightn't be pleasant, but as long as you come from um, a good place of intent, you think through your method of communication, you respect the other person, you show empathy, uh, and um, that's all you can control. How your message is received, how your message is received is beyond your control. So, again, my barber this afternoon was worried about, I don't want to go and say something because I'm going to upset my business partner. Well, but how do you feel by not saying something? Well, it's eating me up inside. Well, then you can't control how your business partner receives it. You can do your very best. You can be clear. You can go and seek to understand. You can influence. You can persuade. But ultimately, what they choose to do with your information is entirely up to them. But will you feel better by having that conversation? Yes, I will. Go and do that thing. What if you sort of know that if you're going to have a conversation but it's not really going to change anything? Why not? So, so here's the thing, because what you're then saying is the standard I walk past is the standard I said, I'm just going to accept that. Oh, that's so-and-so. That's how they always are, so-and-so. That's how John always is. No, I mean, I guess <coughs> it's sort of saying even if you share your, you know, share your views and you might comment about something, but you know the other person isn't really going to um, not reciprocate. But is it really going to make a difference? Why aren't they? Call them on it. Hey, listen, I've had this conversation with you twice now and I've noticed that you're not doing anything about it. Is there a reason why you're not? Mm. Like, why is that okay? Mm. It's not okay. Mm. But it takes courage, which is leadership, to have that conversation to call that person out. I see this happen far too often. It, it's incredibly sad. People just let stuff go. They sweep stuff under the carpet. They don't They don't lean into this stuff. Mm. 
it mightn't be a nice conversation, but think about, um, and, and, you know, I bet you people watching us now, when you have a difficult conversation with someone, I find you actually have this um, newfound respect for each other. Because mm. you're prepared to have that conversation, even though you know it's uncomfortable, even though it's going to cause you anxiety before you have it. Yeah. But if you believe that that's going to help your business, your project, do that thing. I'm not suggesting any of this stuff is easy, by the way. So please don't, um, you or, or, or people watching, please don't think that any of this is easy. It all takes effort. Uh, it all takes time. It takes patience. It takes skill. But leadership is a skill just like finding a property, right? Just like calling an agent, just like negotiating. These are all skills. And if you want to be a better property developer and have a better property development business, then this is just yet another one of the areas that you need to um, build your build your muscle in. Mm. Yeah, and absolutely, having those difficult conversations is challenging. No one wants to no one wants to have them. No, mm. no. But but <clears throat> uh, you think bigger than that conversation. So this is now. This is where procrastination comes in, right? So procrastination is fear. It's rooted in fear. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you think beyond the initial thing. In front of me is a difficult conversation with a, a, with a joint venture partner or a teammate. But beyond that, when I, when I have a successful conversation, we're going to have a far more productive, effective and efficient project. Yes. Now, now, am I, um, let me rephrase, I am not naive enough to think that every single thing can be resolved because it can't, right? This is why people are busting up all over the place, right? Whether it be partnerships, businesses, um, you know, marriages, whatever it is. But if we spent more time on this, if we went back to how we were at the start of our, of our project together with the respect, with the courtesy, with the asking of questions, with the listening to others, if we operated that way right throughout, then I would argue that you probably wouldn't have the number of um, challenges that we do. Mm. And that comes to the next point. How do you go about motivating others? Because challenges with, come up, a big stick. miscommunication breakdowns, and it all seems to sort of can snowball. And sometimes it can be hard to motivate yourself when it's sort of like, oh, no, oh, crap. We've got price rises here. We've got build, you know, build, build, um, build times taking months longer yep. than they expected. How do you yep. keep motivated in that situation? Self well, you got, well, there's, well, there's a couple of things. So, so one is motivating yourself. And so that is go back to the first one, which is uh, recognizing that, oh my gosh, there's all these things happening, this uncertainty, I've got prices going up, I've got delays, I've got no supply of this, uh, blah, 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 blah. What's the alternative? What's the alternative? Put your head in the sand, hopefully it rectifies itself, it ain't gonna happen, right? So the alternative is to, uh, is, 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 to, to uh, is the self-leadership of going, I need to get things moving forward. The motivating of others is to go back to, hey, guys, hey, girls, uh, what is our goal? Mm. Are we on track with our goal or are we not? Mm. If we're not on track with our goal, what do we need to do to get on track with that goal? What are the tasks that need to happen? Who's going to do that thing? When can you do that thing by? Is there anything that's going to impede you from accomplishing that particular task? got to go back and remind ourselves perhaps it's using the fear using the fear of if we don't do this thing costs will blow it even more if we don't go and call this particular um, um, supplier we will miss out because the next shipment isn't here for three months mm. but it's about again understanding the individuals and recognizing that some people will respond when you use some fear-based psychology with them and uh, but others may not Yes. Right. Others, when you use fear-based psychology with them, they might go within themselves and capitulate, mm. right, and and be crippled with it, with anxiety and anxiousness and not be able to move forward, crippled with overwhelm, mm. right. So it goes back to a comment that was made earlier by uh, I think it was Cameron, is that people learn things differently. Yeah, yeah, 
right? But it's about figuring out what is it going to take to help move the project forward? What else do you need to do? What support do you need? Are you clear on what it is that I want you to do? Go to the slide above. Clarity. Do you have the skills to be able to do that thing? You know, maybe you don't have the confidence. Right. Let's figure out how we're going to get some training and support for you. Maybe I'm going to go with you for the first one. I'm going to demonstrate how it's done and I'll watch you do a few and then, then set you free, like whatever it might be. There's some real, real nuggets in this. And I'm sitting here thinking through the different projects that I've been involved in, the different people, and it's like, okay, are we, are we, are we stepping up? I mean, I'm talking about even myself. I mean, but are yeah. we all as a collaborative mm. stepping up mm. as leaders in our projects? Because if we so don't take the responsibility, then mm. you sort of go, I'm going to blame it on someone else for the outcomes. Yeah, and in, in a moment I'm going to take, take you through a slide on a behavioural theory, uh, but um, but you're, it's about accepting responsibility. You know, I, I often talk about the two superpowers that I discovered back in 2015 when I first started my own journey was responsibility, and that is that the bloke that was staring back at me in the mirror uh, is 100% uh, responsible for where I was at, uh, and the second one was gratitude. And I've taken them with me um, you know, for the last seven years. And responsibility is key. It's your project. There's a lot of zeros at stake. Like, accept responsibility. You want to be involved in this thing? Involved in property development? Like, it's not for everybody. I know a lot of people are interested in property development. I meet a lot of them. But they're not committed to doing this. And that's okay. Like, that's, that's not a criticism. That's just reality. And so it's about finding your thing. Not everyone is uh, is meant to be an entrepreneur. It's pretty easy to get started in entrepreneurship, right? But not everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone is, um, you know, um, uh, is able to deal with the cut and thrust of property development. And when things go wrong, it's not when things go right. Like when things are going swimmingly, everyone's a champion, right? Everyone's a champion. Right. Take, for example, at the moment, real estate agents. Right. Previously, when the market was doing that, every real estate agent, all they needed to do was do an open home and yep. they'd sell a property. Now it's more challenging. So what happens in challenging times? Well, the cream rises to the top. The better performing agents will rise to the top and the same will apply in any given field. I'm just using the agents because of what we're talking about tonight, but it doesn't matter what industry. When times are going well, everyone's an expert. But when times are tough, the cream rises to the top. Yeah, absolutely. And the, exactly what that that last point around we had it sort of easy in the property market the last the last two years, even though we had COVID. But now it's sort of well, we've got to do things a bit differently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and that's that's about adapting, right? So so the word of twenty twenty one was around pivot, right? And so, uh, but it's about adapting. It's about doing something different. It's about recognizing that the way that I used to do things may not serve me moving forward. If I want a different outcome, I'm gonna have to do something different. And so you've got to adapt. You've got to pivot. You've got to come up with new ways, new creative ways, innovative ways. But that's exciting. That's growth. Right? That's what the opportunity is. Uh, Siri wants to talk to me. But that, that's the opportunity. It's about recognising uh, that we need to adapt to changing circumstances, but but there's also an awareness piece to go, you know what, there's things that, there's things that I've got to do differently. It's a different environment today. If yeah. you want to go and find a, a, a deal, uh, it's a different environment today than what it was uh, 6, 9, 12, 24 months ago. Yeah. Got to do things differently. Absolutely. Monitoring and managing performance and coaching. I, I'm conscious we've got a few few more slides to go, Tony. Oh, okay, we, we can uh, I'll skip through this. So monitoring and managing performance. So this is about going, right, these are the things that we're going to do, applying some goals to them, some smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant in time, applying some smart goals, managing and measuring what we're doing. How many of those are we doing? When are we going to do those things by? Um, and let's report back. So... Um, 
Uh, so that's cool. We'll skip through that. Uh, coaching. Well, co there's a difference between coaching uh, and mentoring. So mentoring is typically people who have got the runs on the board and who are able to pass on through their own expertise. Coaches don't necessarily have to have the runs on the board, but they have to be experts in bringing the best out of individuals, really tapping into the psychology and helping people get out of their own way uh, and move forward. So uh, in, in my instance, well, I've got the best of both worlds in this instance, you know, that I'm in property and I'm also, uh, you know, coaching people in property as well. Righto. Fantastic. Next Alrighty. slide. Uh, okay, we'll go, we'll, go, we'll go through this pretty quick. So this is uh, just a flick, out, flick through, flick through. Next one, go. <laughs> so this is a behavioural theory. It's called the line of choice. And basically go back to what you said before, Cheryl, about responsibility. And if you look on the far left-hand side, below the line is all around being a victim. It's the world owes me something. Woe is me. I'm a victim, right? Victim mentality. I'm sure a lot of your viewers have heard of that. Above the line is about being a victim, is about being a champion, is about being uh, in charge of your own destiny, right? I call it um, life by design, business by design, right? Mm -hmm. That's about being above the line. So the first one is I can either be below the line and I can blame people and I can say it's that person's fault and the other person's fault, or I can accept responsibility and go back to the three things that I said earlier around uh, around clarity, proficiency, and environment. Yes. Rather than blame someone, did I give them clear instruction? Even better, did they understand the clear instruction as I intended it? Right. So that's the difference between blaming and accepting responsibility. Accepting responsibility is it's your project. Uh, the next one is uh, react or respond. <coughs> so I can either react to things that are going on. I can throw my hands in the air because prices are going up, because there's delays, because there's lack of supply, blah, blah, blah. Or I can respond and I can figure out um, what am I going to do next? Right. What, what else can I do? My favorite five word phrase. What else can I do? And so that's the key thing. And I get my clients to write that up on their wall, write it up. What else can I do? So when you're having a, a tough moment, you look up at your wall and you go, what else can I do? Uh, the next one moving along is around excuses versus results. Excuses is below the line, focusing on all the excuses why I didn't do something. Results is about what I've got to do to make it happen. Uh, hopelessness versus hope. Again, hope below the, uh, hopelessness, sorry, is below the line. Hope is above. Failure versus feedback. Failure is below the line. Viewing failure as feedback is above the line. Hey, I did this thing. It didn't work, but I learned something from that. I now know not to do it that way again. I can refine which direction I'm going in, right? And so that's what feedback's all around. Being a victim, below the line, being a hero, above the line. Scarcity, I touched on a little bit earlier, but scarcity mentality. I see this all the time, particularly when it comes to deal finding. Oh, Tony, there's no more deals out there. What, in the whole world? In the whole world. Well, that's scarcity, right, versus abundance is there's plenty of deals out there. I just need to work harder. I need to follow my system. I need to be consistent, and I'm going to have phenomenal success. Uh, mm -hmm. Problem below the line, solution above the line. So fixate on the solution. When you focus on a problem, by definition, you're looking backwards. Can you change anything that's gone before you? No, you cannot. So you focus on the solution. Uh, vagueness versus clarity. We've touched on clarity a fair bit tonight, but if you're not sure of something, stick your hand up. Hey, listen, what did you mean with that? I'm not quite sure of what you meant. Like a lot of people will, will won't say something because they're fearful of being criticised. They're fearful of going. Well, you should know the answer to that. Like that, that's you know you, you know how um, you go to places and they'll say um, ask a question and they'll say no such thing as silly questions, right? And of course, no one sticks a hand up. But if you're not sure of something, if you if you're vague about something, then you need to stick your hand up and seek clarity. Um, fear versus love. You fear speaking to an agent or you love speaking to an agent. You fear putting in a low offer or you love putting in a low offer, right? You make a game of it, right? And you want to learn to love the things that you find difficult. You fear putting your face on social media or you love it and you embrace it and you recognise the reason for doing it. Um, you are stuck is below the line or you have some choice. We all have choice. If you think about being stuck, if you go, oh, my gosh, I feel stuck, what you think about expands, starts off this big, ends up being this big, and then before you know it, it's this huge immovable object. You're never going to move forward versus I have choice. We all have choice. I can go left or right, up or down, black or white. Everybody has a choice. What you do next is the choice. The whole idea of this um, behavioural theory, it's the line of choice. You can choose. 
Can't change what's happened, but you can choose what you do next. Uh, judgment versus accepting, right? Judgment below the line. And the last one, procrastinating below the line or getting out there, rolling your sleeves up, putting your left foot in front of the right. That's above the line. That's taking action. I love this such a I I've always, always remembered these images um in, in some of the courses that you've done, Tony, and probably mm, one yeah. of my favorite ones because it's always around going, how can I you know, how can I, how can we flip mm. Mm. how you know the negative you know, negative feelings that we have or negative thoughts to be able to flip it over to that that victor mentality. Yeah, 100%. Well, here's the thing. So next slide, if we go to that, is the answer. So this is it. So uh, this is this is worth the price of admission and uh, conscious of time for everyone. So uh, we could potentially wrap up after this. But um, uh, this here, so how do I become self-aware? So the reality is that in a lot of cases, you're not even aware that you're operating below the line. Mm. It's habitual. You've done it for years and years and years and your neurological pathways are all wired together and you're operating in a certain way and you don't even realise you're doing it. You operate based on fear, you operate based on blame, you operate based on guilt, based on hatred, based on you know, anger, and you don't even realise you're doing it. And so the first thing is we need you to become self-aware. Um, there's a two-step formula to change. And I've got it in an upcoming slide, but, but we're going to skip through. Two-step formula. First one is I've got to become self-aware. Second one is now that I'm aware, I've got to take some action, right? So how do I become self-aware? Well, I call these my two universal questions. What went well and what can I do differently? And you do this on a daily basis. You might do this after a meeting. So you might have a team meeting with your joint venture partners or a team meeting with your builder or your consultant or your contractors. And you might say to yourself, what went well? What went well in that meeting? What were the great things that I did in that meeting? And the reason why I ask what went well first, do you know the answer, Cheryl, why I ask what went well first? Because we're so used to thinking of the negative things. Yeah. So we have a negative bias, right? Our, our mind goes defaults to negative. Why? Because our mind's primary role is survival. So it's always looking for the worst case scenario, something that's dangerous. So we automatically think negative. When you go what went well, it forces you to think differently. Not only forces you to think differently, it forces you to think about the good stuff, to be grateful. So you want to go and change your mindset? Typically, we've got a poor mindset because we're coming at it from a position of lack. I haven't got something, whatever that might be. But when you flip that around and you focus on gratitude, and the amazing things that you have, what went well? What were the great things that happened in that meeting? What were the great things that happened in your day? What were the great things that happened in the last week? That helps you feel uplifted and be appreciative and grateful. The second question then is what can I do differently? Not what went wrong, not what did I fail in, not what did I do and make a mistake in, but what can I do differently? What are the things that as I move forward, as I bound out of bed tomorrow, the next time I encounter that same meeting or a team meeting, whatever it is, what am I going to do differently? How do I improve? See, life is about growth. You know, growth mindset is around learning and constantly challenging yourself to be better tomorrow than you are today. So what can I do differently? So the very deliberate questions, uh, my clients who work with me, you're one of them, Cheryl, um, will know, uh, you know that I ask you these questions uh, during, our, uh, during our sessions, and it's very deliberate. And uh, it helps you. But you can take these questions and ask them of yourself to become self-aware and to elevate from your conscious, uh, from your subconscious mind to your conscious mind. <coughs> so the things that you're not aware of when, you know, and then you stop and think about it and you go, what would I do different? Oh, my gosh. I was acting with fear today. I didn't call that agent. I was in that meeting and I, I hesitated to stick my hand up and ask that question because I was worried that I was going to be criticised by someone. You know what? Next time I'm in a meeting, I'm going to lean into that and I'm going to stick my hand up. I'm going to look yeah. to ask the first question. Right Now, it doesn't mean that you do this once and you're cured, right, if only, right? But it's, it's a lifelong commitment to being better tomorrow than you are today yeah. in whatever your endeavours are. Fantastic. Now... Self-awareness and action. 
So we've done that. So that's the two steps. Change formula. There's two steps only. First, become self-aware. Once you're aware, you still can you still can ignore it. You can go, yeah, I'm aware that I'm operating in fear. Yeah, I can't be bothered fixing that. Right. Mm. So you've got to then take action. You've got to put your left foot in front of your right and do something about it. So that's that slide. Next slide. Uh, this is where we are. So if if you're uh, if you're interested in um, uh, following me for more then uh, go to all those places. We're in all the social media um, places. If you want to send uh, my assistant an email, that's her email there. It's admin at, uh, and we should have put my website in as well. Uh, but that's where we are. So um, we're all over the shop uh, doing plenty of uh, things, all in the spirit of wanting to help people, help uh, you know, help develop people in property, uh, build an amazing property business, uh, people in business, uh, create a phenomenal business, uh, being better leaders, being more efficient, being more effective, taking action, changing their mindset, uh, finding amazing deals, and uh, and ultimately uh, living a fulfilling life. Fantastic! Thank you so much, Tony. Hey, that's okay. Really, really, like I said, anyone that's 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 doing doing projects or, or looking to go into projects, I mean, there's this the theoretical side of things, and there's the actual, you know, the structural side of 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 developing mm. and this is why i love having tony come to and join us on the business of property because it's 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 the soft skills it's it's the mindset it's the personal development side of things that really determines the 80 percent of success the 20 percent sort of the theoretical stuff but it, mm. the 80 percent is all that stuff that's in here and in here and what it, you know how we show up every single mm. day and what we do so Thank you for a fantastic session, Tony. It was brilliant. Thank you. Thank, I look you. Thank you, everyone that joined us today. Um, someone here says, Tony has truly helped me transform. That's incredible. I can't tell who that is. Thank you. Obviously a raving fan there, Tony. Mm. Thank and, you. And again, um, testimonial mm. from me. I mean, Tony has been a coach and a mentor to me mm. for quite a few years now. Mm. And mm. you know, would it be wouldn't be here. Property Development Australia and Business of mm. Property would not be where it is now if it was not for your encouragement and your guidance you. as well. So um Tony is known in the industry as as the property property coach. Mm. Um he doesn't teach you how to do development, but like I said, it's the 80% of the mindset and personal development side of things that really um sets you apart in your in your journey so all various ways to contact tony reach out to him and thank you everyone again for joining us for another session of the business of property make sure you visit and subscribe to our youtube channel the business of property where you can find all our past episodes including the ones where tony has been a special guest on you found value in today's show make sure you hit the like button even my kids know it, so you know it's the little one with the big thumb, and get notified when new episodes come up. So until next time, keep well, stay safe, and see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.